who pass unrighteous laws and oppress the poor and the widows and the downtrodden. No nation, no state will ever survive if it does not treat equally all of its citizens. Therefore, this poem is simply titled, Woe Unto You, Judea Sippy. All right. <laughs> A state that refuses to plant and water justice will continue to harvest crops of chaos and destruction. A case, a state that miseducates its citizens, mangles and misdirects its future into a mass of muddy magnolias drowning in deceit. A state that engineers a schoolhouse to jailhouse pipeline will continue to handcuff its own development. State legislators must be shepherds and feet washers rather than being pirates plundering the pantry for their own profit. They ask us to tighten our belts while their bellies continue to bloat from the fat of pork details that they hoard while the masses remain malnourished. Our officials are obese with injustice and democracy is dying from the diabetes disseminated by these dysfunctional dictatorial demagogues. The cancer of classism continues to eat away the body of Mississippi as the entire state is a petrified plantation trapped in the past by fragmented funding and fueled by poverty plowed by sharecropper schools that rarely teach students how to usher themselves into sovereignty. How long will we continue to give teachers toothpicks and duct tape and expect them to repair the state's dilapidated engine of education, especially since it's the legislators who have dismantled the machine so that they can ensure enough laborers to work in their fields of inequality. Governors whose eyes are blinded by Jim Crow memories do not have the vision to craft curriculums that liberate children from a state, low-performing policies, and enable its workforce to blossom into a rainbow of skills that will shine like diamonds illuminating a new day. Yet, due to our constant gloomy forecast, businesses don't come to Mississippi because Mississippi keeps giving the business to its people. And it is difficult for you to grow your own businesses when you are fertilizing the soil with the blood of your workers. Paying people peanuts will only perpetuate a Pandora of pandemonium. It is a dying wage when people with jobs can't feed their children. Forced to choose between paying bills and purchasing medicines, most people's health care plans is a paper thin prayer not to get sick. If an airport a day keeps the doctor away, right, will not investing in preventive measures keep the high cost of health care from strangling us into oblivion? As the mountain of mental health is treated like a speed bump, steamrolled by apathetic drivers of the legislative locomotive, Mississippi is on life support because our lawmakers consume the comfy foods of kickbacks rather than the nutrition of fully funded Obamacare. Yeah. Or is it that the their hearts are made of the same stone of the pharaohs and are not able to create an exodus that ushers us from the history of their hatred. Yes, let's go walk in Mississippi so that we can trample the flesh-eating diseases of ignorance, greed, sexism, and racism and walk into a new land with fairness flowers like ripe fruit. Oh, and don't let their twisted tongues fool you. These plastic aristocrats are an army of acronoid associations. The Chamber of Commerce is a union of political pit bulls. The Mississippi Manufacturers Association is a union of arm twisters. The National Business Association is a union of blood suckers. It seems that the only time the rich is allergic to unions is when the people unionize against their evil. If it is true that we reap what we sow, then Mississippi will never yield good produce until we learn to plant seeds of righteousness rather than planting seeds of exploitation. Yeah.